Every now and then, a person is born who somehow manages to rise above the many mathematical odds that are stacked against them. Ceaselessly baffling are the stories of such needles in haystacks who make their way from small villages and humble beginnings into the halls of the elite. Ever growing, we all try to go beyond the limits drawn by planetary circles. Some of us get caught in their grip, and some of us escape. In today's Masters episode, we meet the man who knew infinity, whose life, though laced with tragedy, reminds us all of the power we hold within to go beyond any limitation that crosses our path. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to the Masters series. Today we're having coffee with Srinivasa Ramanujan. Now some of you might know of this wonderful Indian mathematician from a film called, let me just check the name of the film, The Man Who Knew Infinity. Why do I keep forgetting the name of the film? I'll put it up from the screen so you can see the man who knew infinity and the actor in this film is the wonderful Dave Patel whom you might remember from Slumdog Millionaire he is a wonderful actor I saw the film some time ago I think it was on TV here at home and I just managed to catch bits of it I haven't sat and watched the full film but what I have done is I have studied the life of Srinivasa Ramanujan and I've been matching it up astrologically, just reading about it, trying to find, okay, what are the highlights here? What are the interesting bits? And I've written my usual two-page script, which I'm going to read out to you now. So why don't we get stuck in? I think it was Billy Joel who sang the song, Only the Good Die Young. Well, Srinivasa Ramanujan was more than good and more than young. He left this earth far too soon aged only 32, and he left a future timeline of people, which includes all of us watching right now, puzzled by the brilliant works he left behind. While I can't appreciate the skill needed to devise his theory of divergent series, I can admire the man's desire to know God through a creative language of his choosing. For Srinivasa, it was mathematics. He is famously quoted to have said, an equation for me has no meaning unless it expresses a thought of God. Srinivasa was unique in that his mathematical ambitions weren't guided by a desire to create nuclear weapons or make money through a commercial endeavor like others of his time. No, this was a man who wanted to reach behind the veil in the same way that Einstein did who, by the way, was a contemporary of Srinivasa and was recognized by the Nobel community in 1921, the year after Srinivasa died. Anyway, the reason I bring up Einstein is because both men were quite similar astrologically. Both had a Gemini ascendant, strong planetary energy in 10th house Pisces, and a strong career-focused Mercury. Both men were scientists who felt free to talk openly about God. Another comparison I'd like to make is between Srinivasa and Nikola Tesla. This is because both of these men had a great Mercury and a great Mars. While I agree with all astrologers who say a good mathematician must have a great Mercury, I also believe one must also have a strong Mars. Many say you're looking for Mercury and the Sun, but I say Mercury and Mars. Why? There's something machine-like about the language of mathematics, in that though it can abstract out quite far theoretically, all those theories are only any good if they simultaneously work on the ground level. In the world of mathematics, we are about as far away from the twelfth house of fantasy as we can get. We're in a place of perfection, precision, things being grounded, earthy and real. 
So of course, we want to see a good, strong sixth house. Srinivasa not only has a great sixth house, it's in a Parivartana exchange with Mars, who is in fourth house, Virgo. This astrological engine was the mathematical machine that operated within Srinivasa, propelling him to drill deeply into Scorpio, to winch out gems no one had ever seen before. Similarly, Nikola Tesla also had Mars in Virgo, in the sixth house. His Mars was strong due to its conjunction with Ketu. So often I have seen that when Mars is conjunct Ketu, it's very difficult to dispute the work or the arguments put forward by such a person. Now let's get to the story of how Srinivasa, a young Indian man who had no formal training in mathematics, ended up at Trinity College, Cambridge. This all happened very quickly during the early part of 1913. Srinivasa wrote to G. H. Hardy in January 1913, received a reply in February, was on a boat to England in March, and arrived in London on 14th April 1913. So clearly the early part of 1913 must have been pretty special astrologically. And I can tell you, it was. Dasha-wise, he had all the important ingredients needed for such a big international move. Mercury, Saturn, Rahu and Jupiter. Jupiter, as Lord of the Tenth, indicates that the move would be career-related. Pisces, in the Tenth, indicates a foreign agenda. Saturn and Rahu, in Cancer, are also indicating a foreign agenda for where he would live. And Mercury's Lord Mars is based in the fourth house, another classic indicator that one won't find success at home and will have to go elsewhere. All this happened while Saturn was making his transit third from Ramanujan's moon. That's the time when Saturn rewards a person after they finish their Sadesati period. Saturn is also transiting twelfth from his ascendant, again another foreign indicator. One of the things I like best about the all too short life of Srinivasa Ramanujan is the man who discovered him, G. H. Hardy. While we don't have a time for his birth, his moon chart shows us some interesting things. One is the artist combination of Mercury and Venus in Capricorn, Uttara Ashada, the lonely nakshatra. To me, it's this astrological signature that once inspired him to say, my association with Srinivasa was the one romantic incident in my life. I like this quote because it broadens the meaning of what it is to be romantic. Romance is certainly not just limited to a traditional boy-girl encounter. It's present any time our hearts expand beyond what our minds think is possible. It's in the letter of a young man who wishes to study. It's in the opening of foreign doors. It's in the time and space of those who innocently want to know the mind of God. It's easy to see that Srinivasa was extremely fortunate to have crossed paths with such a man. But it's even nicer to know that it meant as much, perhaps even more, to Hardy. A lesson to us all that being an instrument of a miracle is just as thrilling as being on the receiving end of one. So I hope you enjoy my very brief overview of Srinivasa Ramanujan. If you would like to let me know if you can spot anything in his chart or, or if indeed you've seen the film and you found it inspirational, I find such people very inspiring and yeah, it's um, it's important, I think, for astrologers to, to keep brushing up their mathematical skill. But please don't make it a barrier to entry. If you're an astrologer and your mathematics skill is not so great, don't let that deter you at all. I know K. N. Rao talks about this. Uh, I've got his books in my London apartment, which I don't have access to right now, but he does talk about the fact that if you don't have mathematical skill you shouldn't do astrology. I disagree with that completely because 
to me, I think it's another abstract language astrology that is like mathematics, but it's not the, the same. It, it, it's more abstract than that. And I tend to think if you love music, if you're an artist, if you love symbology, if you have a good intuition, these are all very good ingredients to pursue astrology. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on all these things in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.